Well, welcome to the 7 o'clock talk. Nurse Jessica should be out here in just a moment. <clears throat> and we'll get to talking about adrenal fatigue. And I can't express how important this is to the human body because when you talk about the hormones, they actually kind of rule the roost when it comes to the mitochondria. Actually, you can think of it like a marriage. The hormones control how the mitochondria sense and view and see the internal space. That's why if you listen to uh, Dr. Mark Hyman or you listen to uh, any of the other functional medicine doctors that have written books, I'm not excited about writing a book. Don't think that you'll ever see one from me. But they talk about food as information. <clears throat> and so one of the things that the cells in the body actually sense is a high sugar. Hi, Kathy. What the body actually senses is a high sugar environment. And if the body senses a high sugar environment, then what happens is, is the body goes through a process of looking at the looking at the environment and it starts to I look at that <laughs> you've been doing a lot of housework actually she's been doing the fence and getting everything up so she has been hard at it but anyway um that high sugar environment her? looks at it and says um hey we need to flee and so then Horses things flee. happen so how does this affect us and I want to take a second. I'm going to add in this. This is a 29-year-old female. And so when this person came to us, she had not had any kids, um, was pretty stressed, was trying to get healthy, was working on that. She belonged to a nutrition company and was taking lots of powders and stuff like that and some like stimulants like uh, uh, mahong ginseng and stuff like that. And Great. what you're seeing here is this is what a high cortisol would be. Did you feed her? This is a low cortisol. And in the morning what should happen is we should be dead in the center of this. We should peak at about 30 minutes. And then it should start to come down and just slowly slope down until we're ready for bedtime. What does this do to the body? Well, what that says to the body is, is there's stress. And how many females, this this woman works out, she's, she's dedicated to fitness and health. What does this say to the body? What does this cortisol pattern say to the body? Better run, you're dying. That's right. And so if you're running and trying not to die, what happens? Your body doesn't care about having babies. And so we have abnormal periods, we have hard periods, um, migraines. I don't remember her other symptoms. Acne. Oh yeah, acne. Inability to trim or waste. Yeah, uh, yeah, the insulin resistance. And so when we see this. I got you, girlfriend. What happens is she's talking to her horse. She's hungry and she needs some hay and she needs <laughs> some feed. So <laughs> what happens here is, is we see this and the body doesn't want to do anything. So what do we see happen? Look at the sex hormones. Just so you know, that purple, and remember we're talking about a 29 year old, is a postmenopausal range. So just because you look good, just because you work out and you have a semi-decent diet, if you're stuffing your face with, how do I say? If you're not using medical foods, if you're buying off the shelf type of 
potions and powders and stuff, they typically have a lot of added junk to them. And it started to tank this poor girl's. Well, this per person actually ate really well, except yes. she was using her own drinks, which have tons of chemicals and coloring in them. Even if, if, if your drinks are colored, they have dyes in them. And so we start to see that she's producing enough DHEA, but what ends up happening is, is her body is not allowing the DHEA to go over to convert to testosterone to then convert to her estrogens, E1, E2, and E3. And look at her testosterone. So where does, where does this go? What, what happens to this? Well, this is what we call a pregnenolone steal. And so her cholesterol comes in and it goes to pregnenolone. And then it's supposed to start to go down to DHEA and then it goes down to the neurotransmitters. And, or if you're under stress, it can go across and it will take cortisol high. And over time, when the adrenals fatigue out, your cortisol and your DHEA start to drop. And when that happens, you cannot produce your normal sex hormones. Stress is a killer. Don't let anybody, if they tell you it's in your head, you can look at them and smile and say, yes, it is. Because how I perceive and deal with stress absolutely deals with how your hormones look and how that all gets done and makes you a person makes you a, a human being and this directly affects your um, this directly affects your mood it'll affect your neurotransmitters that sunshine is yeah that's beautiful we are outside on the porch enjoying our Jess found a killer deal on patio furniture that she's been eyeing forever um, but back to what's what, when we are stressed, it absolutely affects your hormones. It affects your mitochondria. It affects your mood. And if that stress stays long enough, then it affects your way you actually produce the neurotransmitters. And then people start to get that stubborn weight around the midsection. They get brain fog. They get tired. Um, if you remember how that cortisol pattern went, it dropped way down. So in the late afternoon, that person would want to take a nap. And then if she took a nap, it would destroy her sleep that night. And that becomes a vicious cycle. So this is one of the tests. That's actually one of the tests that we do. And now we can say, you know, we can't say a name, but we've had a successful pregnancy we have a very healthy, active little boy, and he is doing wonderfully. Um, periods are back to normal. Acne gone. Um, what else? What Mood's were great. Yep. Uh, married, doing great. So these things affect not only your health but they also affect your quality of life. And not every case is as easy as this. I mean, this was a, a super simple, we got rid of the processed foods, we got rid of the powders and the potions, we put her on great supplements. But she was afraid to eat fat. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. She was afraid, she was watching calories and afraid to eat fat. Yeah. So we told her to eat more fat and eat more calories. And when she stopped being afraid of getting fat, she actually lost she weight. Didn't lose a ton, but she lost a lot of size. Size, yes. Well, and the thing about that is, is when we say eat fat, 
we're not talking about going out and getting a bunch of bacon and gobbling it down. We're talking about avocados and we're talking about uh, olive oil and avocado oil and those types of fats that are good for your body, have great omega-3s, great omega-6s, and, and things of that nature. I didn't go into the actual hormone section of this. Two reasons. One is, is where I have the name blacked out, that flashes and sometimes will reveal, and that becomes a uh, HIPAA violation. So I can't show you that stuff. And the other is, once you start to dive into the hormones, that is a rabbit hole and a half. And the explanations are longer than we're going to take because we're both starving. And she has dinner <clears throat> on the stove. Hope is wanting her dinner, too. Well, that's not us. That's that's the no, wee she one's job. No, she because she doesn't have any grass. Oh, that's me. <laughs> is there anything else? So, when addressing health, um, and we started doing this with all the current functional medicine patients, actually, we're doing the adrenal test with them. And we have a really interesting one now who has a H. pylori infection, a Giardia infection. Looks like her, I'm trying to remember all the labs, looks like her... Um, cells aren't actually taking in the nutrients she shows she needs amino acids but when you go to look at the branch chain amino acids and the organic acids in serum in the blood they're there so once again the analogy is is you have gas in the gas tank but it can't get to the engine because the fuel pumps broke so it looks like we're going to have to do a little cell membrane enhancing with that patient it is fascinating, fun work, and we don't just deal with the underlying things because, Jessica, if there's a need for, as we're going to tell this patient, there's a need for liposomal amino acids. And so that's where she comes in, and she can help in the short term to start to boost the amino acids that get in by doing the liposomal amino acids. And typically, if you need amino acids, you also need glutathione, and you do that. Got anything else to add? Nope. How bad is stress? Is my stress? No, how bad is stress? Oh, like, stress will kill you. How many crazy people have you seen with stress? Always. <laughs> and stress makes you make bad decisions. It makes you eat funky ways. It makes you want to stay up. Or sleep your life away. Well, that's adrenal fatigue also. If you want to sleep your life away, you're into that stage three of adrenal fatigue. And that requires copious amounts of vitamin C, copious amounts of amino acids, pregnenolone and DHEA, and maybe phosphorine or maybe licorice. So there is a... There is a balance of how to move the levers. So, well, with that all said, thank you all. And we are going to go have some dinner. Get back to work. She getting back to work. I got more painting to do. The lizards look great. I love lizards. <laughs> have a great evening. <clears throat> If you will go when you go to the barn.